Hello and welcome to this video about my shallow reef tank that has been set up for a little over two years without the use of any filtration or a sump. If you are a beginner fish keeper you might be wondering how this is even possible. After all most people recommend using filtration and a sump to help keep your tank clean and healthy for the aquatic life in the aquarium. So how has this tank managed to thrive without these traditional tools? We'll dive into that and explore the approach I've taken to maintain the health of this reef tank. Join us as we take a close look at this reef tank and discover the secrets to its success and things I wish I never did. In the end it all comes down to trial and error. I've been running this aquarium without any filtration or a sump. That's right, no skimmer, no refugium or mechanical filtration. Except a small device I recently added to help maintain an aesthetic look. But we'll take a look at that later. When I first set up this tank, my goal was to create a low maintenance system that closely mimicked the natural environment found on shallow reefs. I wanted to see if it was possible to have a thriving, stable ecosystem without relying on traditional filtration methods. So far the results have been quite impressive. However, there are a few things I really wish I would have done differently. Overall, I think this tank has been successful due to a few key factors. First and foremost, I have a very low stocking level in the aquarium. I only have a few small fish, which helps keep the nutrients at low levels. I also perform regular water changes to help keep things in balance. I do 10 to 15% water changes every 2 to 3 weeks. This helps get rid of the buildup of waste often found in the sand. Finally, over time the rocks have turned into a natural filtration source due to the presence of beneficial bacteria. The beneficial bacteria that live on the rock and in the sand helps to break down excess nutrients and keep the water clean. So overall this reef tank has been a success. It's been a fun and educational journey and I'm continuously learning new things. But now that the corals are getting pretty big and settled, I am starting to run into what some might consider as luxury problems. As the reef becomes more crowded and conditions become more competitive, corals will fight for every inch of space. In my tank this is done through physical aggression, where larger or more dominant corals use their size and strength to push or overgrow their neighbors. Another way is through chemical warfare, where corals release toxins to kill or inhibit the growth of their rivals. Luckily I haven't experienced that in this aquarium yet, and hopefully that will never happen either as it could wipe out the entire reef. When I got started in the salt water hobby, I preferred corals that moved with the water flow over, for example, SPS corals, that to a new reef keeper may look like sticks. One example of one of these corals I really liked as a beginner and wish I never added to this aquarium is Pulsing Senia. I started off with a frag on the main rock, which after doing a bit of research found out that in the long run it would be better to have it on a separate rock so it wouldn't take over the whole reef. Well, about 6 months after removing this separate rock from the aquarium, I'm now noticing a ton of these pulsating polyps all over the reef and they're taking up space quickly. This is one of those pieces I really wish I never added to the aquarium if I could do it all over. But that's just my opinion. If you don't mind large colonies of this coral on your reef, they are really fun and easy to keep. This is something to consider before buying such coral. Another coral I really shouldn't have added to this aquarium are these palitoas. When I added them to the tank there were about 5 polyps or so, but now, 2 years later, there are hundreds. These corals contain a ton of toxins that, when damaged, will be released into the water column. I have been taking out small pieces every now and then, using a lot of precautions of course, but they're growing faster than I'm able to remove them. If you have any tips on how I can remove them efficiently and safely, please let me know in the comments. I really need your help on this. Now sometimes the battle for space isn't that bad at all and I actually like it. Take a look at this red Montipora plate and Cephastrea. They have been living on top of this rock for a long time now, constantly taking a bit of space away from each other. This creates a natural look and I really like that. This hammer coral is irritating certain parts of the Stilopora that's growing behind it. This means it's time for me to take out some coral cutters and trim it down a bit. My most favorite coral in this aquarium is this chalice. It has been in here for about a year or so and started off as a small 3x3cm frag. It's been growing so fast it's now getting attacked from multiple angles. I recently discovered a massive wound where this mushroom coral was irritating it. 
I tried removing the mushroom but without success, because a small piece of tissue regenerated into a new mushroom. The chalice is also super close to this acropora table and about to reach the turbinaria plate next to it. It may be time to take some drastic actions in the aquarium and I might have to remove or even remove certain pieces to keep the reef in healthy conditions. While coral warfare can create a natural effect that would look really nice, it can also be detrimental to the water parameters and cause even more problems. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I recently installed a small device to keep this tank aesthetically pleasing. Since the aquarium doesn't have an overflow to skim off the surface, a lot of biofilm made up of protein from organic waste material builds up and blocks light from entering and also limits gas exchange in the water. This small surface skimmer solves that problem for me. A biofilm, besides potentially having negative effects on the reef, doesn't look pleasing at all. Now we have a clean surface which is so much better for the eye and for the life within the aquarium. What is something you wish you wouldn't have done with your aquarium? And how should I take care of the problems I'm running into? Please let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.